and then we continue our formula um, in the book it was actually raised to the power n times t so this is not n times t like just times it's 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 all of this raised to the power n times t and the way you do raised to the power is with two asterisks and that's why I have it there and so all of this raised to the power n times t so n is the number of times per year that the interest is compounded no, um, number of compounds that's our n so I'm going to put in parentheses n times t number of compounds times t times t is the specified number of years years of compounding we have it here so times that okay so th there is the order of operations with Python and so it's going to follow that accordingly we don't have to excessively put parentheses around everything it follows the order of operations so it knows what to do for example uh, once it gets into this parentheses it knows that it has to divide z z user principal by a number of compounds before it adds the result to one that's just an automatic order of operation and so we don't need to further put parentheses around this but over here uh, we need to make sure that we put parentheses to make sure this this multiplication go you know happens first before we raise the power to before it's before it's everything here raised to the power that um, and then everything else is just going to be happen automatically with with over auto operation so this formula should be correct all right we're exceeding this gray gray line here again so we need to make sure we break this line um, we can break it somewhere around here. Before I break it, I can type in backslash. Do not com confuse this backslash with the division sign, right? Um, so I'm going to delete it for a second. I just want to break the line. So before I break it, I type in the backslash and hit enter. It's still exceeding this line, so I'm going to break it again somewhere around here. Before I break it, I type in the backslash, hit enter. I know it looks a bit weird, but it works. The this is just the line continuation character. It allows me to break the line into multiple parts and still keep it whole keep it together okay so that's our formula um, and then now what we have to do is just display a message telling the user that if you compound if you start with ten thousand dollars and you compound it 12 times in a year at an annual interest rate of say two percent you end up with uh, well, well for for ten years you end up with this amount so let's just put together a message like that before we do that though, let's go back to the hint down here. It said the user should enter the interest rate as a percentage. For example, 2% will be entered as 2, not as 0. Point, sorry, not as 0 0.02. The program will then have to divide the input by 100 to move the decimal point to the correct position. So when the user is entering the annual interest rate over here, we don't want to force them to type in a decimal like 0 0.02 or 0 0.05. We want them to type in 2% to represent 2%. And then when they type in 2%, in our calculation, we need to actually make sure that 2 is not what's used, but actually 0 0.02 is what's used. If someone types in 5 in our calculation, we want to make sure that it's 0 0.05. It's 5 divided by 100. If they type in 2, we want to make sure it's 2 divided by 100. And so that's what he is going to type in, actual integer, actual an actual integer. And then we're now going to make sure that, or we need to make sure that whatever these types is actual is an actual decimal. So once we have our, our annual interest rate, imagine someone typed in two. We need to further make sure that that number is converted to an actual decimal. And so we're going to take everything that is already stored in the annual interest rate after the user has typed it. So imagine they type two, and then divide by a hundred. To get the actual decimal for example if they typed in 2 here we want to divide by 100 to get 0 0.0 0 0.2 the actual 2 percent this is what's going to be used in the calculation this is what the user is going to type i know you're seeing a bunch of my searches over here i should actually use the the, the, the actual calculator here right so yeah this is what's going to be using the calculation 0.02 and then two is what he's just going to type. 
So we divide by 100 and we store it back in the variable, annual interest rate. So annual interest rate is going to be equal to what is already stored in annual interest rate divided by 100. It isn't typed in 2. It's going to be equal to 2 divided by 100 and the result of that is going to be stored back in annual interest rate. And then we use the actual decimal in our calculation here. So now we fixed that here, the note here. So we should have an actual accurate value. All right, so now let's print something to tell the user that this is what you're going to end up with. So we say, let's put together a nice message, right? Let's put together a nice message, a bunch of arguments in the print function, format it nicely so it, it reads nicely. So I want to display something like, if you start with $10,000, and compound it 12 times in a year at an annual interest rate of say 5% for 10 years, you'll end up with this amount. This is the message I want to put together. So let's let's do that. So I'm going to say, um, if you start with, now the starting amount is the user principal. So I'm going to actually concatenate it. Instead of doing something different, I'm going to concatenate that value with a string. So if you start with space, and I'm going to concatenate with user principal. This user principal is a number, is a floating point value, and this here is a string. If you try to concatenate a string to a number, you're going to get an error. Um, so we need to make sure that this is a string. Fortunately, we can use a format function to format this value and the format function always returns a string. So once it returns a string, concatenating a string to another string won't be a problem. So if you start with, let's call the format function around this value. Now the format function, oops, the format function takes in two arguments. It takes in what you want to format and how you want to format it. So what I want to format is user principal and how I want to format it is going to be the next argument as a format string. I want this formatted as a floating point value, and I want this formatted to two decimal places, right? So the precision goes before the conversion character. Precision goes before that, so I want this format this formatted to two decimal places, so I'm going to type in point 0.2. If I wanted this formatted to, th to three decimal places, I'll type in point 0.3, but I want it to, to two decimal places, I'm going to type in point 0.2. The other thing I want this to do um, in terms of formatting is I want it to automatically put commas where necessary. If it's $20,000, I want you to automatically put a comma after the 20, so 20, comma, 000. Put commas in there automatically so it looks like an actual monetary value. So I'm going to put the flag, the comma flag, right before the precision. So the, the comma goes before the precision and the precision goes before the conversion character. Format this value as a floating point value, floating point number to two decimal places. Put commas where necessary, and then I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of that value. So this whole thing here is one argument in the print function, and then I'm going to put a comma. Actually, no, never mind. <laughs> we're 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 putting together a string here, so no need for a comma here. Let's put together a long string. So this is going to read: If you start with whatever amount it uh, amount it is. Um, so let's see, if you start with this amount um, and compound it, so that's what we want to continue continue saying, and compound it, uh, so I guess we can put a comma, right? Let's put a comma so we can have another argument. Or if not, we can actually just also concatenate it. So let's see, let me see how I want to do this. If you start with this amount um, and compound it, Um, okay, so let's ju let's just go ahead and concatenate it with with other values, right? So if you start with this amount, and then let's concatenate it because at the end of the day, this will be a string. This will also be a string. So let's just go ahead and concatenate the strings together. So if you start with this amount, let's continue, comma, um, and compound it. And then now what we want to say is and compound it however many times, right? Um, 
actually since the annual interest rate is the next thing let's just say and compound it at an annual interest rate of the rate so and compound it at an annual interest rate of um, and then now we want to con concatenate it to the annual interest rate of this rate here. So I'm going to paste this rate. Um, so remember that the annual interest rate is going to be a decimal. So if the user typed in 2, it's going to be 0 0.02. So we need to format that so it actually saves 2%, right? So I'm going to call the format function around this the format function takes in two arguments what you want to format which is our annual interest rate and how we want it formatted as a format string now here's the case we want it formatted as a percentage so if the value is 0 0.02 we want it formatted as a percentage what's going to do what's going to happen is it's going to multiply that percentage value 0 0.02 times 100 automatically if you put in the percentage sign this way and we want it formatted to actually point zero decimal places, right? We don't want it to say 2.00%. We want it to say 2% or 3% or 5%. So round it to zero decimal places um, and format it as a percentage. That's what, that's what we want. All right. 